All right, I'm here with Louie, and you will hear Oscar. Uh, we're just doing this one at a time. In this video, I'm going to go over how you can teach your dog to stay behind an invisible line, such as when you're uh, preparing food in your kitchen or you're eating uh, at, your dinner, at your dining room table. Now, for dogs to be within seven feet of anyone who's asking who has a high value item, including dogs, is a way of challenging or asking for that item. So if your dog is within seven feet of you when you're eating and it's not begging, it's inappropriate for it to be within seven feet of you. Uh, and uh, for dogs, the way that they learn is they probe, they're waiting and expecting a no. So if the person's here and I come right here and the human doesn't say no, that's essentially saying, yeah, I'm cool with you sweating me for my food, which is not what we mean, but we think of rules as negative like we talked about off camera. So I like to be completely force free and positive reinforcement only. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna teach the dog how to leave the room on its own before I make them leave the room. So the way I do that is I have a treat here and I'm gonna roll it a couple feet outside and I say the word out. So you, whenever you use a marker or a uh, word, you want to try to say the word right before the treat goes in their mouth or right before, uh, excuse me, right before they do the act. So as soon as he steps out, I'm going to say the word out, and then he licks up the treat. So the action, the command word, and then the re reward or reinforcement. All right, so I do that twice, out. The dog usually runs back, and I do it a second time, out. The next one is I would say out, going out in this direction. So I want to be able to say out and have the dog leave anywhere. This is just for you guys. That's okay. That's not high production value. Uh, so the idea is we want to teach the dog to leave every room, but I also want to teach the dog to go to the room. So this is the, so let's say I say roll it here, and I say out, and I can say dining. So dining means coming this room. Kitchen means going this room whatever that room's gonna be. So what I do is I do two outs for every room in the house, and I walk around, two outs there, two outs here, two outs there. When I complete it, then I come uh, and I'd say outside of the room, and roll the treat in, and assign a command word. So now I've created a situation where the dog will leave every room and go to every room. What I usually do for this is I would have everybody in the house, the little ones you might not wanna do with everybody, but maybe you would have the three of you, uh, where you go out and uh, you do it, then later on in the day, mom does it, and then later on in the day, uh, Ben Finn does it, uh, uh, with one of you guys' supervision. So that way, all of you can tell the dog to leave or go to any particular room. All right, so I also went over off camera the escalating consequences, the way that I disagree with dogs using body language and movement. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna imagine that there's an imaginary line going from here to there. And what I'm gonna do, um, now that I think about it, let's transition, let's have you move over there, a little bit easier to see from that perspective. And buddy, I can either have you step to the bottom of the stairs or you can come around and sit on the bench next to your mom, whichever one you want. All right, perfect. Okay, so now the, uh, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop enforcing the line right here. Now for a lot of people, this is easier if you put painter's tape down so you know exactly where the line is. I'm not gonna need it, but you guys might wanna put it down. And after a while, you can take it up after a week or two, the dog knows it. Now, I usually ask my clients, do you think I could take a bunch of treats like this and drop them on the floor over here and not say anything to him and have him stay out of the room? That's the answer I like. She said no. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop enforcing at the line. So I'm at the line right now. I'm facing him. My authority is facing at him. Buddy, you got to stay on the other side of your mom, though. Uh, and so I take a step back, and I pause. If the dog stays put, I take another step backwards, and I pause. You know, make it hard so as soon as he violates, I stop what I'm doing, I rush towards him. But I stop him between each step. And I hiss is my way of disagreeing. Now he's objectifying the tree, you see he's staring at it, and you can also see, please don't help. And uh, you can see he's breathing heavy. This is a little bit stressful for him. He looked at me, so now I can take another step backwards. And I don't say, now I'm ready to go towards him, but I didn't need to because he stopped himself and he didn't cross the line. I hiss before, if he shows me intent, he's going to cross the line, I hiss to disagree with his intent. Once he crossed the line, I march towards him. Now he stopped there, so I stopped here. If he had crossed the line, I would keep on marching towards him until I was at the line. And if I crash into the dog, that's okay. We don't want to be abusive to the dogs, but we want to make sure they understand that I'm willing to follow through. Now if he's staring at it like that, that's like objectifying the treat, and so I'm waiting for him to disengage and look at me, and then I'll take my step backwards. Now, when you're doing this exercise, if the dog ever SITs or lays down, you want to take a step backwards at the same time that they do that, because the, you're saying that SIT caused me to move farther away from guarding it. And I kind of look at it as how many movements does the dog have to go through before it can violate it. Oh. Now he took a step, so I take a step backwards. 
pause, step backwards, pause. Now, when we're doing this, I'm not suggesting that you guys drop a whole bunch of treats on the ground like this. I'm doing this for demonstration purposes. What you can do, and right now we have one of the uh, family's kids who's gonna try to come out. This is a good opportunity for the dog to see that David's distracted. So uh, F-Man, why don't you go ahead and go downstairs? So when that sort of thing is happening, make sure you're watching the dog because the dog's gonna take an opportunity to come and grab those treats. Now, when I SIT, I lose some authority. So I didn't SIT, but I dropped down. See, see, so make sure when you're doing that, you're paying attention. Now, what I'm gonna do is uh, when we're eating dinner or a meal, we're actually gonna be distracted. So instead of doing this, what I usually do is create stage scenarios where I can help the dog practice what I wanna do. As we mentioned at the very beginning of the session, I would set the dog up for success by exercising it first, giving it 10 minutes to recover so it doesn't have all the fight in it. Then the second thing I would do is instead of actually serving our meal, I would get a piece of bacon or a piece of roast beef. Have everybody sit at the table like they normally would. So I, I'm, I was ready to come forward, but I didn't need to. Now he's technically crossed the line, so I probably should. And that's why the, line, the tape is important for the dog to understand. And when you're marching towards him, don't be half lackadaisical. You want to be very bold and confident in your movements to get the dog to move back. So he's stationary, take a step back, pause. Stationary, take a step back, pause. Um, now when you sit, make sure you're sitting on the edge and you're ready to bounce back. So what I would do is I would microwave the bacon, have everybody sitting here, grab the bacon, put it down here, and start cutting it up and putting it on people's plates and pretending like you're eating. But you're watching the dog out of the corner of your eye. As soon as the dog starts coming, you hiss. If he, if he crosses it, you stand up and march towards him. Same thing for the kitchen. Um, what I do for the kitchen is I microwave a piece of bacon or whatever it is. I, first of all, I tell the dog to out, the way I showed you at the beginning of this video. Then I microwave the bacon, I put it right there on the end of the workout, and then I walk around the kitchen, I grab my ingredients, I grab my plates, I turn the stove on, and the whole time I'm watching the dog, but trying not to let the dog dog see me doing it. Anytime the dog crosses the threshold, I stop what I'm doing and rush towards the dog, or I hiss first. After a while, the dog will sit or lie down. Once it does, then I can actually start my real prep work because the dog uh, basically did a warm up. It sure looks like he's cooking, He's in the place where they cook. It smells like he's cooking, but as soon as I cross that line, they're on top of me like wet on rice. Uh, wet on rice. Um, eventually what will happen is I'm gonna sit or lie down outside the boundary. Then you can actually start your actual cooking or your actual meal or whatever the case may be. Now the dog is, you can see that Louie's breathing heavy. That's as an indication I'm not used to restraining myself. Most of us never ask our dogs to, uh, to demonstrate much self-control, except for when we need it. And that's the worst time to learn any skill. So what we want to do by doing this every day when we're at dinner, for a couple days, they're going to challenge you like crazy. After a couple days, they're like, blue shirt man came and ruined it. Now I can't even get close to the, uh, to the dining room table, and they're rushing towards us. And you see him looking. He's telling me, I want those treats, but he's practically he's doing something called avoidance. He's looking directly away from it, which is a little bit more polite, but I'm still not going to let him have the treats because this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, so... Um, I'm gonna have the family practice this on their own. Practice this when you have time. When you're cooking, your back is to the dog and you're not paying attention to what's going on. Remember, dog got two seconds to either correct or reward. So if I'm facing this way and the dog crosses the line, I don't see it, and I see it four seconds later and I try to correct the dog, it doesn't know why I'm correcting him. So it's really important, it's bang, bang. Well, this handsome fellow right here is Louie, I'm David, and these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that likes to invade your personal space when you're eating or cook preparing food in the kitchen. 